with your hammer. But the most lethal Chinese weapon of ancient times didn't just smash heads, it removed them. Perhaps the most secretive Chinese weapon of all time. It was the ultimate stealth weapon. Used by assassins, it had just one purpose. Decapitation. Its name? The Flying Guillotine. We've reached our number one killer on our countdown of China's most lethal weapons. The Flying Guillotine was linked to the 18th century emperor Yong Zhong's extraordinary rise to power. With absolute ruthlessness, he seized the throne. Legend says that he even murdered his father and his brothers. Many rumors circulate in society at the time about him murdering his father and brothers, his greed, his love of wine and women, and so on. For a long time, the people thought of Yong Zheng as a tyrannical, calculating, and vicious emperor. The emperor's reputation wasn't helped by having his own private army of assassins. The legendary army went under the innocuous sounding name of the Pole Hoisting Authority. Their official task was to organize the emperor's hunting and fishing trips. But it was their unofficial duties that struck terror in the court. It was rumors surrounding the death of one of the emperor's brothers that first gave rise to stories about the flying guillotine. But when the body was found, the head was missing. The emperor's assassins were presumed to have done the deed, but no one knew how. I heard about flying guillotine when I was little, mainly from magazines, martial arts novels, as well as movies and TV. The flying guillotine appeared in them all. Featured in countless martial arts movies, the flying guillotine is the ultimate weapon of fantasy. But did this legendary weapon truly exist? Wu, a film buff and art director, is keen to find out. The problem is that no one has ever seen a real flying guillotine. So Wu decides to design one for himself. Wu concludes that the flying guillotine should resemble something like a hat big enough to cover a person's entire head, with some sort of mechanism at the bottom to activate the blades to decapitate the victim. Consolidating all available folk legends and descriptions of the flying guillotine, and adding a little imagination of his own, Wu works out a design diagram for the mysterious weapon. The entire design should be like this. There's a cover on top and a soft back below, and it's underneath where you find the mechanism. Wu's recreation is comprised of three movable blades. A pull of the rope snaps the spring-loaded blades shut. It's an elegant design, but will it work? There's only one way to find out. Wu takes his drawings to a workshop where craftsmen can turn his design into reality. They construct a blade mechanism from wooden boards. It resembles a camera shutter, but instead of cutting off light, this one cuts off heads. Wu's colleagues use modern technology to make a flying guillotine. But was technology 250 years ago in the Qing dynasty up to the job? Wan Xiaoqin, a researcher at the Chinese Academy of Military Science, has no doubt. The killing principle is based on the blaze, and such blaze could be constructed. In the Qing dynasty, it would have been possible to construct such a flying guillotine. This is the flying guillotine that we made. I'll now demonstrate how it works. It covers the victim's head like this, and then you pull this chain. That's how it works. It's a simple design. There's the top, 
a cloth bag in the middle, and the most important part, where the mechanism and the blades are located. How do these blades work? They work when you pull on this chain from afar. I'll demonstrate for you. When you pull on the rope, the blades all converge inwards. Building it is one thing, but how in the world do you get this onto someone's head? Kung Fu master Ken Yun needs all his 30 years experience to discover the answer. I think, other than throwing in the normal way, another method would be to lip up and toss it onto someone's head from above. Throwing strength and accuracy are the first things that need to be practiced. Timing is also crucial, as the victim won't just stand there to be targeted. Did such an incredible weapon exist? Could it really work? Jung and his team are put to the test. First, he'll try it the most straightforward way. As this flying guillotine weighs one and a half kilograms, hitting a target accurately is no easy task. But after repeated attempts, Yun concludes that it can be done. Which power needs to be great? You also need a strong arm and good accuracy. If you manage all three, you've got a good chance of success. Yun reckons that warriors in ancient China would have been skilled in leaping. He thinks they may have deployed the flying guillotine while in mid-air. With the aid of a trampoline, Jung's assistant attempts to do just that. He's a trained stuntman, but even he finds it difficult. It takes five attempts before he finally does it. You need a certain level of Kung Fu skill before you can master the fine guillotine. A lot of vigorous training is needed. Emperor Yongzheng had the motive. His craftsmen had the knowledge. His assassins had the skill. But did the flying guillotine ever really exist? Fact or fiction? No one knows for sure. Only one thing is certain. If Chinese craftsmen did build the legendary flying guillotine, it would have been the ultimate kung fu killer.